Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to start with uh, comments uh, from Matt and then your questions. Matt? Yep, thanks. I'll, uh, I'll just I'll make a quick opening statement and then you guys can, uh, can ask your questions. But um, you know, this morning, Cap and I talked to John Maley and informed him that we were going to make a change at hitting coach. Um, as you guys have seen, uh, we have um, asked Charlie Manuel to step in, and he's agreed. Charlie will be here tomorrow. He's traveling here tonight, so he will not be here for tonight's game, but he'll be here tomorrow. Um, as you can imagine, this was a, a very difficult decision. The hardest parts of our jobs are when we have to um, release a player or fire an employee. Those are uh, the, hard part, they're the hardest part of the job. Um, but the reason we did this, and the reason we did this today, is because we have 44 games remaining. We are two games out of the playoffs. I know that a lot of people are burying us and saying we have no chance and we haven't played well. And part of that's correct. We have not played well. We have not hit well, especially since the star break. But we are not buried and we are not out. And in my judgment, uh, with 44 games remaining, it makes sense for us to try something different rather than continuing to do the same thing we've been doing. Um, and we are very fortunate that uh, we have Charlie Manuel um, as, an, as a colleague here who is willing to step in at this time, um, is excited to do it, feels he can help, and um, will be here tomorrow and, and give us his very best effort to try to get the most out of this group. I want to make clear, I don't think there is a, um, a silver bullet here. I don't think there's a special formula. Charlie's going to come in and magically change things. I don't I think to, to suggest that any one person has that ability um, is not correct. Um, but what I do think Charlie can do um, is bring an energy level, a love and passion for hitting, which many of you know about, um, a looseness, a confidence, and a, and a different message to our, to our hitters um, that I think can, can be very helpful for the next 44 games. Um, that's why we're making this change. And um, again, I suspect when Charlie gets here tomorrow, we'll make him available, and, and you'll be able to ask him some of the questions yourself. Matt, you have the first question. Hey, for this is Matt and Gabe, you guys have been very steadfast in defending, um, you know, the philosophies and the work of the of the coaches. Why uh, why did that change in your mind, or was there something you saw on the last road trip uh, that forced you to reconsider those statements before? I'll take a first crack at that. Um, I'll work and I'll work backwards. The road trip wasn't wasn't good, um, but that's not solely why we're making this this change. Uh, our offense hasn't been good for some time now. Um, philosophically, this may not be as big a shift as it seems. Um, Charlie Manuel, a lot of you know this, but some of you may not. Charlie Manuel has been very instrumental in the development of our organizational heading philosophy. Charlie, although he has a, a senior advisor title has been very active in our in our minor leagues. He was very close with John Maley. He knows our players very well. He watches the Phillies all the time, often from the from the box with me upstairs. Um, and Charlie Manuel, as a hitting coach in the 1990s, was preaching a lot of the things that have now been labeled as exit velocity and launch angle and, and you know, have some new titles. But that's the kind of stuff that Charlie was teaching back when he was helping Jim Tomey become a Hall of Famer. Um, so... I understand that there's a kind of a simplistic viewpoint here that we are shifting from new school to old school, but it's really not that simple. I, I think there, I think the the messenger is changing, but I think the message will be largely the same. Bob, this is for both you guys. What do you feel like the most important uh, aspect of the hitting instructor's job is? What What do you, especially you gave as a player, when, what were you looking for when you were a hitting coach? I mean, you were a player. Sure. Uh, I think the, the first thing that a great hitting coach does is he, he's a good psychologist. If you can instill confidence in your hitters, if your hitters walk up to the plate with some swagger, uh, feel like they're going to drive the baseball, feel like they're going to make good decisions at the plate, it's the most important part of your job. Looking back to some of the, the best hitting coaches I was around, um, a guy like Rudy Jaramillo comes to mind in Texas. I think the reason Rudy was so good at his job is not because he had any one specific philosophy. Uh, it wasn't because he was preaching launch angle or hit the ball on the ground or drive the ball through the middle. It was because he cared a lot. Uh, when I got to first base after getting a base hit, he'll say, hey, remember that time in, in June or 
you know, way back when that you were feeling really strong and you're, you're on time, like, let's get, back, let's get you back there. And I knew he cared a great deal and he made me feel like a million bucks walking up to the plate. I think that's the number one job responsibility of a hitting coach. I think it's something that Charlie definitely has the ability to do. Um, circling back to, to Matt's point, I mean, I was with the Detroit Tigers um, when Charlie was in his heyday at the end of his run with the Indians, and those guys scored a thousand plus runs. Um, those guys had that confidence when they walked up to the plate, from Travis Fryman to Jim Tomey to, to Robbie Alomar. Those guys felt good about themselves, and you could see it in the batter's box. Charlie was instrumental in that. Matt, how much influence did John Middleton have in making these two decisions? Uh, look, at any time we make a, a big organizational decision, uh, we're very collaborative about that. So John definitely was aware of this, involved in this, um, as he has been with, for a lot of decisions we've made. Um, Andy McPhail as well. Um, but you know, we when we when we make des big decisions, they are they are done with a you know, collaborative approach and a and a kind of a united front. So, John was involved. Matt Breen. Oh, I'm sorry, Megan. Uh, there's a lot of talk about the messenger and the messaging. Um, Gabe, obviously, you were around him on a day-to-day -day basis. Where do you feel like the messaging was off the mark, or what needs to change with the messaging? John Maley was really appreciated by our players, really appreciated by me personally, by definitely me. appreciated by Matt. Um, this is much more about the fact that we were just struggling mightily to, to score runs. And Matt's point is that we, we needed to make a change. And um, when that happens, we, we, we look ahead and, and thinking about what kind of impact Charlie might be able to make for us. I'll, I'll just I'll just add too, very much like Cap said when the question was about what what makes a good hitting coach. Cap said a lot of things. It's also about results. You know, if you score a lot of runs, you can make a hitting coach look pretty good. Um, and that's what we haven't been doing. We just haven't seen the results lately. It doesn't doesn't necessarily mean John Maley won't be a good hitting coach again. I actually suspect he will be because I think he has a lot of the qualities that Cap talked about. But when you're a, when you have playoff aspirations as a team and you're not scoring runs, results matter. Howard. Uh, Matt and Gabe, uh, there's now a growing perception in the city, and Gabe, you'll understand why I asked this question, that Charlie Manuel will be more if this team is successful, more than the hitting coach, if this team is successful the rest of the year. So I don't know if that undermines Gabe as the manager, can you address that? And Gabe, uh, something I saw on social media, which is not social, it's not media, but I got to ask it, that you thought Charlie should have been removed as the manager in 2013. So uh, that's the second part of the questions. Let me, I'll, I'll, I'll take the first part of it. Um, you'll have to, first of all, you have to ask Charlie this tomorrow, but Charlie's going to work for us for another seven weeks and hopefully into October in, the, in this capacity. Charlie's been very valuable to us in the, in the role he's in. I am super appreciative that he is stepping up uh, for this role for the remainder of the season, but it, 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 this is not a role that is likely to extend beyond uh, 2019. Um, I hope that we, we achieve such success in the, in the, through the final part of the season and into October that that becomes you know, a, a lingering topic of conversation, Howard. Uh, but this is very much a, a short-term assignment. And Gabe, how do you feel about that perception in the city, even though Matt just addressed that? I think it's great. I mean, the first thing that comes to mind for me is it's, it's always going to be nice to, to have somebody who has had success in this market, um, both as a manager um, and in many other capacities, to be able to pick his brain. Like, I, we always want more resources and Charlie's a great resource and I look forward to having the opportunity to pick his brain. Part of that question about 2013 about I have no idea where that comes from Howard. <laughs> I, just, I, I, don't, I don't even think I had a, I don't even think I have a plan. It's going to come out. So that's why it's already come out. So I just What to, what is? That's all. That's all. I'm just you know, I don't, I'm not I'm not sure what that's about Howard okay. honestly. No 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 I, I'm just following up. Just John. Sure. Great, thank you. Uh <laughs> 
Uh, hopefully, both of you can answer this. I remember maybe a month ago, a month and a half ago, you talked about simplifying things for the hitters. Do you think that some of the hitters have had a, a tough time adjusting to some of the teachings, whether it's launch angle, the type of swing, what you'd like them to do? Has there been an adjustment period? And have you simplified things you know, recently as well for the hitters? I wish it was that simple. I wish there was a simple answer to that. Uh, you very well, if you polled, you know, players around the league, you might you might find some that think that current teachings are too complicated. And other, others might be craving more information. Every player is different, and I think that is the um, that's the essence of coaching: is that different players want and need different things. They respond to different things, and. That's why we, we always talk about balance, right? How many times have I sat in front of you in, in some capacity and talked about the importance of balance? There is no one way to teach players. There is no one way to scout players for the draft. There is no one way to build a coaching staff or to build out a front office or to make decisions. You have to, and my, this is my opinion, but I believe you have to uh, have balance in your, in your decision making. And in, as it, as it uh, applies to coaches, I, I think it's the same way. You have to understand uh, what certain – you get to know your players, understand what they need, and then deliver what they need. And if you do those things, I believe the results will follow. Matt, can you oh, Sure. Well, I mean, I'll just follow up. I think we have a balance of players who want more information on in our clubhouse and, and some of them who, who want very little um, in in my career and then like going back some players will like literally plug their ears they don't want any more information they just want to go up to the plate see the ball and hit the ball some guys are thinking about their mechanics when they walk up to the plate they want to know where their elbow is in space or or how soon their front foot is getting down and they might come back to the dugout and look to a hitting coach to to ask those questions to and some guys can't get enough game planning and, and just devour the information. They want to know what's going to happen in specific counts and what velocities are going to be like. And is his ball sinking or running or cutting? Sometimes they ask the hitting coach and sometimes uh, they ask their teammates. Um, we can't simplify an approach for every hitter because they don't always want it to be simple. So we have to be able to, I, I, I've talked to a couple of players today. We're in the customer service business. We're going to give them the information they, they want, how they want it. They're gonna determine whether it's simple or wh whether it's more complex, and we're gonna deliver that to be supportive. So circling back to Bob's question, when we send them up to the plate, they feel like the most confident version of themselves. Okay, Matt. Was anyone else considered for the hitting coach job, either inside or outside the organization? Um, you know, honestly, once Charlie was the Charlie was the guy, and we're very fortunate to have him in the organization. And once he was uh, committed to doing it, then it became an easy decision. I, you know, had had he not wanted to do it, we may have had to go in a different direction. But but uh, fortunately, he was n not only willing to do it, but very excited to do it. I, th I think you will find that tomorrow. You, you would have changed any coaches, regardless if Charlie had not agreed to do it. Correct. Uh, Matt, were there any are there any other potential coaching changes on on the table right now? No. Uh, Matt, For, uh, when, when you see kind of the results that you guys have had at the big league level, hitting wise, um, has that caused you at all to reevaluate what you guys are implementing through the minor league system? And do you plan to make any adjustments to that? I think we're, I mean, like we're constantly evaluating constantly evaluating um, what we do, and that's whether you're succeeding or, or struggling. Um, we have actually had a lot of uh, positive developments offensively in the minor leagues this year. Um, you know, some guys that have really taken steps forward and um, the communication and the, the synergy bet between our staff and our players has been really good. So um, I'm not gonna say that we are gonna, we're not gonna make adjustments because I suspect we will. Um, but as I said earlier, I think they're, the the narrative, if it exists, that that we are shifting from a new school approach to an old school approach by going from John Maley uh, to Charlie Manuel is is far too simplified. Uh, I think this is more about changing the messenger. Let's move to the other side of the room. Someone had a question here. Okay, Matt. Yeah, Gabe. Um, you've talked, and the players have, have talked about having their best baseball still in this team. What does a move like this do to bring that out in these guys? I think it's up to the players. Right, like this is 
this is certainly um, it's a fresh voice it's, that can be helpful. And at the end of the day, I think these players accept responsibility, as do the coaches, as does our front office and our entire organization. The first thing we do is we all look in the mirror and say, what can we do a little bit better? What can we do differently? Our players are going to do the same thing. So they may, we may, take off down the stretch. And if they do, they're going to deserve all the credit. And we're just going to rally around them with support. What, what Charlie can do is he can provide a positive um, influence from a guy who absolutely loves and devours hitting. Uh, and I think our players will respond well to that. What kind of message did you want this to send, Matt, to, to the players that, hey, jobs could start to be lost if things don't improve here? That is not the message. The message that we wanted to send and did just send when we met with the players was that, which is largely what I said in my opener, which is that we have 44 games to go and we're two games out of the playoffs. We are this close to achieving what we want to achieve this year, playing October baseball and winning in October. And I know that things have not been perfect. Have we had injuries? Yes. Have we had players that have struggled? Yes. Has it been perfect? <laughs> no. But we are still this close in the middle of August, and a good hot streak will put us exactly where we want to be. And that's the message. The message is we are not going to sit on our hands um, and do nothing. We are going to continue to push, and we are going to continue to try. And if, if everybody does what they can do, this team can play October baseball. Rob. Gabe. I spoke to Charlie last week, and he said the biggest problem he saw with the offense was too many players walking up to the plate, uppercutting, looking to hit a home run. Has that been communicated to you? Is that what's something that you see? And is that, was that lost in the message between what John was trying to preach? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, first, I haven't had a chance to talk to, to Charlie about what he thinks the biggest issues are with our offense. But, you know, circling back to, to Matt's point, you know, th those teams that – Charlie was the hitting coach of the Indians teams. Those guys hit bombs. <laughs> Not saying that that's where Charlie will go with this, and certainly he's going to get all the support he needs to take this in the right direction. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think I'd probably wait to have that conversation with Charlie before I, I get too deep into it. Marcus. Matt, you've, you've said a couple of times and alluded to Charlie sort of being on board with your organizational philosophy. Can you give, I guess, specific examples of, of things that Charlie believes are appropriate and should be uh, tenets of your philosophy throughout the, the organization? Uh, how does Charlie, old school Charlie, match your sort of new school approach? Yeah. Again, I think it, I'm happy to share with you kind of what I think of that, but I think if we just look back at Charlie's own history, both as a hitting coach and manager in Cleveland and then the teams that he had here with the Phillies, you know, those guys, like there were a lot of players, particularly in his Cleveland years when he was a hitting coach, lots of walks, lots of patient grinded out at bats. We've heard this before, right? And a lot of power and a lot of homers. And that's one of the things... You know, just calling it what it is, this team has not hit as many home runs as I thought we would, um, as, I, as probably many of you thought we would. Um, now, I'm going to caution again, I don't think Charlie comes in here and tells a, a group of hitters, hey, do this and you'll hit more homers. It, it's not that simple, and I understand that. Um, but I think Charlie's philosophies of working counts, to having patient at bats and doing damage, just swinging hard to hurt the baseball when you have a chance to do it, I think a lot of those philosophies are very consistent with what John Maley has preached and what we've preached in the minor leagues. Throughout, you know, the last couple of years that since Charlie's been in this new, in his more recent advisory capacity with us, he spends a lot of time, you see him in spring training, you know, he's, he's around the cages, both major league and minor league, but during the year, he's out at our affiliates, and he will work with Alec Bohm and Mickey Moniak and Adam Hazley and, and, and many others. And he works with our hitting coaches, and he works with our hitting coordinator, and he gets the information. So he is learning, you know, even as a 75-year-old man, he is learning some of the, the more modern tendencies, and then he is working those into his own core beliefs, which he has had for, you know, do, you know dozens of years. So I think, you know, Charlie, despite not being a full-time hitting coach in some time, um, I think is, is, is pretty up to speed with modern baseball. Time for two more questions, Todd, and then we'll finish with John. I was just curious uh, what Mails' reaction was this morning. Was he uh, surprised, caught off guard, upset? Um, just curious. I mean, all, all those things. He, he actually handled it like 
like a like a pro. He was really classy and very professional, um, but disappointed, which I understand. John, does Charlie have full power to do what he wants with the hitters in an approach? I know you said the old school, new school is too simplified, and that's not yeah, the case. Right. But if he were to see a couple things that he'd like to implement that don't necessarily marry with analytics, does he have the power to kind of implement those things? He's the he's hitting coach. And as much as any hitting coach has autonomy, Charlie will have that same autonomy. Again, I will uh, say like m many of the things that we do in organization are collaborative. So there's not a lot of things that a, that a hitting coach will implement that Cap doesn't know about or that our assistant hitting coach doesn't know about. Most things that we do are collaborative. Um, and I know Charlie believes in that. We, we've seen that in every role he's ever had. You can't be a major league manager in this league and it's certainly a successful one like he was without understanding the uh, benefits of collaboration. But, but yes, Charlie will have the autonomy as hitting coach to do what he believes. Matt, Gabe, thank you and thank all of you. Thanks.